Thank you, Mr. Obba. We are all sure that as long as you are there, things will keep on improving uh, in this area. So, we now have the pleasure to invite Jack. Uh, I have been calling him Jack for the past week, so Professor Jack Whitehead. So, he is a professor at Liverpool Hope University in the UK and a visiting professor at the University of Cumbria. He is a former president of the British Educational Research Association and a distinguished scholar in residence at Westminster College, Utah. He is a visiting professor at Ningxia University in China and a visiting fellow at the University of Bath. So this year he is an external examiner at the University of Mauritius. So many of you might be thinking about having a chat with him okay, later on. So since 1970, he is a member of the editorial board of the Educational Journal of Living Theories, and since 1973, his research program has focused on the creation of the living educational theories that individuals use to explain their educational influences on their own learning, in the learning of others, and in the learning of the social formations in which we live and work. His original contributions to educational knowledge have focused on inquiries of the kind, how do I improve what I am doing? So without uh, delaying any further, we will now invite uh, Professor Whitehead to deliver his speech to you. Okay, well, many thanks, ma'am, for the uh, introduction and to the organisers of the, the day, because it's a pleasure to be present, uh, just to talk over some of the ideas uh, that I've been working on, certainly for the last 40 years. Um, we're just going to be setting up my computer so I can just show you uh, just four ideas that I've brought to you. But before uh, the computer's set up, I just want to focus on one of the central questions that has come out of my research. And it's related to what the Minister was talking about, because you can have policies in relation to information technology. You can make available through the government tablets and the technology to use. But unless you as teachers actually learn how to use it, the technology can go to waste. And I'll show you how in Ireland, uh, one of the action research teachers has studied her own practice to try to make sure that the technology that's being made available is used effectively. But before I do that, I just want to point to something in the program that is relevant to my own research, and also, I think, uh, to everyone here. And that is the kind of question that you're actually asking as professional educators, and then the kind of question that universities try to get you to answer in their academic courses. And I just want to point out how, in my experience, the I that you're all using in your everyday practice is removed by the university academics when you come to write your dissertations. And I want to try and encourage you to see if you're going to be using the new technology, and especially multimedia, to bring back your own eye, engaged in your professional practice, as you try to integrate ICT within the classroom and try to improve the learning of the pupils. Now, this isn't easy for you because when I started uh, this work 40 years ago, the universities insisted that I take the eye out of my question. Now, think of the question I was asking as a head of science, which was, how do I improve the scientific understanding of my pupils. That was my research question. How do I improve the practice? The university academics were saying I couldn't put I within my research report, that I had to eliminate it. My question then doesn't make sense. If you take the I out of a question that I say that you're asking almost every day, how do I improve what I'm doing? So my very first point is to encourage you to put your own eye back into your research question as you integrate ICT in the classroom because the government can develop all the policies they want. They can make 
the hardware available to you, like tablets. But unless you ask the question, how do I improve my practice with my pupils to integrate the ICT, no improvement will take place. So I want to keep stressing that point um, in relation to the program, for example, that if you have a look at the program, and I examined the, uh, the master's program at the University of Mauritius and also the BSc program this last week, and it really is an excellent program. Both of them are really excellent. I saw some superb work. But one of the questions that I raise with staff concerns the ideas on your program. And remember, these are really good quality, and you'll hear later on today, some really excellent work that is going on at the University of Mauritius. But if you have a look at your program, and you look at the program that follows myself in terms of uh, Shabnam and the others, Kumari and the Improving Reading in Primary Schools, can you? Those points there, just look at the titles. To what extent can kids learn by themselves? Tablets, a critical analysis. Improving reading in primary schools. Now, each of those topics is a really important topic. But unless you as researchers, as practitioner researchers, learn to investigate your own practice as you're trying to improve it, with that kind of question, which is in my keynote address, how do I improve what I'm doing? How do I improve what I'm doing? Do you follow what I'm getting at? That the mediation between the government policy and the academics and what you're doing in the classroom with your pupils will get missed. That you are the great mediator that will actually improve practice in the classrooms with the students. And there is a danger that I certainly went through my universities, and, I, and they're still doing this, advising students to take the I out of their research reports. I just offer high-level general abstractions from a process that you're involved in every day. So that's my very first point that I think you may find strange if you start to study within the university for your masters or your BSc, whichever you're doing, or even your doctorates, because uh, I put 35 of my own successful supervisions of doctorates on the web, and I'll show you how you can access uh, these resources that all the uh, PhDs and masters have made freely available as gifts so that you can actually access them, and actually, if you'd like, learn from them. And I'll show you how you can access those. And can I just ask, uh, in relation to the person setting up my computer, uh, do I have the uh, internet access? Uh, whoever was there, it would be good to know if I've got the internet access because I want to show my website. Could you? Thanks. Now, <clears throat> the second point I want to raise. Okay, can we just see if I can get it? Thanks. Because I think Mohammed was saying that it should be possible. Now, the second point that I want to raise is about methodology. And if at any point that you feel that you want to uh, just intervene with a question or an issue, Please do so. I know it's difficult in a room this size to do that, but I would much sooner you ask for clarification or make a point than just allow me to keep talking. Because the new technologies actually allow this kind of interaction. I was in Thailand five weeks ago. Everybody in the room, there were 42 academics from nine universities and from their central institute for the promotion of science and technology. Every one of them had a computer linked into the internet and they were sending messages to me as I was here like this, they were displaying them on here, and we, interaction was taking place from the room itself. And it was a very effective form of learning. So please don't hesitate. If you've got any questions, please ask, because I know from my experience of external examining around the world that these ideas are certainly not easy to integrate into a university context that uses, for example, a very different methodology that the methodology that I was used to when I got my first honours degree in physics and chemistry was what is known as a controlled experimental design. I was a positivist researcher. I applied that kind of science to my practice. As I became a head of science in a school and started to look at what I was doing, my whole approach to methodology had to change. Because the very way in which I inquired into my classrooms 
was very different to the scientific experimentation I did as an electrochemist uh, in a research year. Now I just want to point to you in the direction of what is known as an action reflection cycle. This is why I've been very excited for the last 40 years in promoting the idea of action research. Because action research, it only began really in education in 1953. The very first text in education, it, the ideas began in uh, the 1940s, but it was only in 1953, the very first textbook on action research to improve school practices was published by Stephen Corey. Now the importance of the action research depends on what is called the action reflection cycle. It is not a controlled experimental design. Now I think that all of you will be using this kind of cycle every day in your practice. If you just have the confidence to make it public and see it as form of your research, that I believe that you will all see that you've got values that you're trying to uh, live in your practice. These are often ignored in academic life in universities that focus on skills and knowledge. Yet it's your values that motivate and sustain you in what you're doing. But this idea of the values you're trying to live can be part of what is called an action reflection cycle. Now it's very simple, but it's systematic and it's disciplined. And I just want you to think of your own practice, your own life, and see whether this makes sense. I'm claiming that every one of you, almost every day, certainly weekly, go through this kind of cycle where you say to yourself, I've got to do this better. There's something that you feel you need to improve in terms of your practice or your classrooms or certainly with an individual student. Your imaginations get to work and you think of ways to improve your practice. You then act on that and as you're acting, some of you will be gathering data to make a judgment, which is very important because you want to know if you're being successful. So when you've acted, you will evaluate the effectiveness of your practice in relation to the values you hold. As you evaluate, you then start to modify your concerns and your actions, you know, the ideas that you have, in relation to your evaluation. Now, that is a systematic form of action reflection cycle. And the I is at the centre. The I is, well, how do I improve my practice? Well, I imagine what I'm going to do and choose a possibility. I act on it, I evaluate, I modify my concerns and my ideas and my practice in the light of my evaluations. Then you can keep going with your action reflection cycles until you get to a point that you're satisfied with what it is you're doing in your teaching. Now that action reflection cycle is something that you can bring into your methodology for your research as an action researcher. And we often use this kind of what is known as the thinking actively in a social context. This is known as the task wheel, thinking actively in a social context designed by Belle Wallace. After some 19 years working in KwaZulu Natal, she's now president, she has been president of our gifted uh, children's association. But you look at this uh, task wheel and you'll see that at the top right there, gather and organize here. Uh, what do I know about this? What's the task? How many ideas can I think of? Which is the best idea? Let's do it. How well did I do? Let's tell someone what have I learned. Now, I think that you will all recognize that. And you've got here around here with the gather and organize, identity, generate, decide, implement, evaluate, communicate. Now, I think that those ideas are really appropriate for the action research that you could undertake in your practice as you're trying to improve it. But as I say, don't hesitate to uh, break or put your hand up if you want me to clarify, because this form of inquiry transforms the nature of the research by putting it into that form of action reflection cycle. Now there's the second idea. The first one was that you include your eye within your inquiry. The second, use the action reflection cycle. Now the third idea, which is maybe strange to you, but it's one that I've demonstrated now around the world, is that literally everybody in this room is capable of creating your own 
what I call living educational theory. Now, I want to hold on to, if you would, that idea that a living educational theory is very different to the theory created by a philosopher of education, a sociologist of education, a historian, a psychologist. Those are known as the disciplines of education. And I studied those in 1970 to 72 uh, to get what was known as my advanced diploma in education before going on to my master's in psychology. The philosophers at the time and the psychologists and sociologists actually told me that educational theory was made up of their contributions from the philosophy, psychology, sociology, and the history to the theory. That the actual educational theory was made up of their principles and concepts. I hope I'm making sense here because I had to say that they were making a mistake. In 1971, I was head of science, and I had to say, look, I think you're making a mistake in this because you're eliminating my explanation for my influence with my students in their learning. That no philosopher, psychologist, sociologist, or historian could produce an explanation that was a valid explanation for my influence in the learning with the students. And I said, I'm going to coin the phrase, a living educational theory, for the explanations that practitioners can give to explain their influence in their own learning and the learning of their students. Now that is a major shift in the meaning of educational theory. That each one of you, I'm claiming, can generate an original contribution to knowledge by putting forward your explanation of your influence, your educational influence and learning of your, yourselves, your students, and also, this is very important, in the social formations in which you live and work. Now, that third idea has been very influential in terms of action researchers around the world that have now got not only their master's degrees but their doctorates as original contributions to knowledge by generating their own living educational theories. Now, it may not be possible to show you this, but certainly with the talks around the world, I have access to a big archive of resources that are freely given by all the doctorates and master's students that I've worked with around the world most of the, many of them from the University of Bath, where I, I worked from 1973 to 2009. And you can access all of these freely. They've been given literally as a gift by all the master's students and doctorates. You can use them freely, you can access them, download them, and you'll see that in relation to, for example, in Tasmania, in Canada, in South Africa, Japan, people have created their own living theories and gain their doctorates for those kinds of inquiries. Okay, so that's the third idea, as well as putting your own eye within your question, how do I improve my practice? Use the action reflection cycles as a systematic form of inquiry that can actually ask, um, answer criticisms that you're just being subjective and anecdotal. See yourselves as knowledge creators as offering your own living educational theory, literally to colleagues and the world, as original contributions to knowledge. And I know Mohammed is very keen to create an archive of narratives of teachers who are actually implementing and using ICT in the classroom and to show how they're doing this. Now, the fourth idea may be, um, again, maybe a little strange to you, um, but it is that as I'm speaking to you now, uh, I've got the camera actually working. Now I use video a lot. I use video because it can move us in our what we call form of representations in our dissertations beyond the written text that you will get in every university course that you study. That the printed text on a page, even like this or in your dissertation, cannot communicate, for example, as I'm with you now, the fact I'm with an audience of committed educators, we've got the minister who's really committed to developing e-learning with the hardware that you need, this literally excites me. Now I hope you can feel there is an energy that I'm expressing 
which actually is being evoked because I'm actually with you. That you have this influence, the fact that I'm with a group of committed educators helps me to express my passion to bring your knowledge into the public domain. Now this energy which is flowing through my body and which I believe that you can partially see and also experience must be brought in to any valid explanation of my influence with my students. You cannot just put it on a word, on pages of text, and hope to get close to the life, and we call it life-affirming energy, and the passion which I feel as I am with educators and my students. Now, that link with the energy and the values, because many of my students have put original contributions into the university, which are grounded in videotapes of their practice, where they point to their practice to show the meanings of values, not in words, but in the embodied expression of love, a passion for compassion, which came out of our health service with a researcher looking at mental health issues. In Ireland, a teacher looked at social justice, not on the pages of the text, but with what we call traveler's children. This is children who are moved around by their parents, and they're very difficult to get a, a proper education. And my, what, it was supervised by Jean McNiff in Ireland, the University of Limerick, showed what social justice meant to her as she tried to give these children a uh, fair opportunity. And if you've got an issue of poverty with some of your areas in Mauritius, that sense of fairness and justice is really important. So if you want to study that, I'm saying that you'll have to use some of the visuals in the multimedia narratives to communicate the meanings. Now that is the fourth idea I'm asking you to consider, that you'll need to change the form of representation that is used within many of the dissertations, many of the publications, to communicate what really matters to you, especially the values you hold and that sustain you within the Mauritian culture. And rather than taking ideas, for example, as a white middle class, uh, and it's a Western academic as I come into this room, You've got to be very careful about this notion of colonization. And one of the ways in which I advise people to avoid that sense of colonization is to look in terms of your socio-historical and socio-cultural context for the original contributions that can emerge from, for example, the Mauritian context. And again, this is really important. Within the Thai context, five weeks ago, he took me, I was there for five days leading the workshop. And after two days, I began to feel that the culture was actually getting in the way of something ministry wanted. The Ministry of Education wanted inquiry learning in science classrooms. This requires the ability to question each other, to argue freely within a group. In the Thai culture, it took me two days of questioning when everybody worked extremely well as a cooperative group. They were fantastic. It's one of the best experiences I've had in the world of people coming together. When it came to the actual questioning, the willingness to argue, there was silence. There was passivity. And it took me some time to understand that this was coming from literally thousands of years of Buddhist culture. Hundreds of years of actual Buddhist culture of hierarchical forms of control, which actually led to passivity. I, mean, I hope I'm making sense here, because in the Mauritian culture, you're very influenced, which I've learned, from a Hindu um, socio-cultural historical influence. And I asked the question yesterday at the seminar, whether or not, in terms of the Hindu heritage, you might recognize this um, desire, if you like, to uh, respect either age or position in a way that got in the way of inquiry and argument and open discussion. So there's just something there within your culture which will be original. Do you know, you've got an amazing mixture of cultural heritages in Mauritius, which all of you should be able to, in your accounts, 
understand how they're influencing what is happening within the school classroom or within the universities. So don't hesitate to bring, we call it, the socio-historical and socio-cultural influences into your account. Now, what I'll do is, I'll just finish on this because it doesn't look as if I'm going to be able to show you one of the big resources that I was hoping to show you, which was, and then if I just ask Mohammed, Mohammed, um, if you want to set up your, uh, the computer you know works onto the internet, I can actually get into my, um, or is this now working? Uh, yeah. Shall I, I just try? Okay, I'll just try. Because you're not connected to the internet. Yeah, that's, that's the message. Um, what I want just to emphasize is that if you go into at home, and just remember this, actionresearch.net. That's all you've got to remember, actionresearch.net. So action research, all one word. You've got access to one of the largest um, resource boxes. It's an archive of material that is freely available for you. And you'll see what I've been talking about is actually available in that resource. On the right-hand side, you'll see the What's New section. You'll see the work I've been doing in Thailand, in South Africa, in America, and they're all on the What's New section. You'll see multimedia accounts to demonstrate how to produce the kind of accounts I'm talking about. If you go on the left-hand side, you've got one of the biggest archives of doctoral theses that have all been living theories. They're all the explanation that individual educators from around the world have given as an influence in their learning. And you've got a real mixture from the classrooms with ICT. I wanted to show you in Dublin City University. Um, the, it, it's in what is called the Educational Journal of Living Theories. And if you can remember this, if you go into actionresearch.net, top right, Educational Journal of Living Theories, you can get access to all the special issue of the back issue. If you go into the special issue, it's all about implementing ICT through action research in the classrooms. And there's one by a woman called Laura Sloan. And Laura examines how to improve the use of ICT in classrooms when the hardware is being provided by the government, but actually many teachers are not using it. So she shows how the action research with the question, how do I improve my practice, can actually help to use the resources that the government is providing. And in Mauritius, it looks like you're going to be, like the tablets and other hardware, you're going to be provided with this. Now, this is where Laura's action research project might inspire you to see that you can actually mediate between government policy and what the children are learning as you actually implement and use the ICT with them. Now, as I said, I would have loved to have shown you the power of this resource, which I've been able to take literally to different places in the world and just demonstrate that I'm not just talking hypothetically. I'm actually talking from 40 years experience of supervision with masters, doctorates, with the resources, answering questions um, from audiences all around the world about how do you create valid and original knowledge from these kind of inquiries. Now I'll just ask Mohammed, do I have another couple of minutes or are we finished? Yep. One of the key questions that I get asked is to do with the fact that if you tell your story, why isn't it just an anecdote? Why isn't it just a subjective expression of meaning that you can't, can't, it can't, can't stand up as a contribution to knowledge? and certainly wouldn't count as an original contribution to knowledge. Now the way that I've shown you can answer that kind of question is by setting up together what we call validation groups between three to eight people, peers, who will look at your draft research reports and ask these four questions. And you'll see that all of the doctorates and most of the masters have actually asked these kind of questions in validation groups to strengthen the validity of the knowledge they are creating through the action research. The four questions, you'll, I think, recognize these, that you ask your validation group to help you improve the comprehensibility 
of your research report. That is, the sense that they can make of your report, the comprehensibility. And th these four criteria come from a sociologist who was very famous in the last century as a critical theorist called Her uh, Jürgen Habermas. And he said, look, focus on comprehensibility, but then focus on something that any positivist researcher, as I was when I began, will be satisfied with. And he said, look, ask your validation group what more evidence they would need to see to justify the claims that you're making. So if you're making a claim, as I hope everybody here will, that through your use of ICT, you're helping your learners to improve the quality of their learning, what kind of evidence do you have that that claim is justified? That everybody here, I imagine, would like to have a difference in somebody's learning. Now this might be colleagues, and it could certainly be students or pupils. So that's the second one, improve the evidence that you use to justify your claims. The third criteria for validity is one that no positive researcher needs to address. And it's one that I mentioned earlier, that everybody in this room is influenced by the unique historical and cultural influences of a Mauritian culture. The third criteria requires you to include in your research report an understanding of how your Mauritian culture and your Mauritian history is influencing your very practice and your writings. And this allows you to build, as Mauritians, an original contribution to knowledge. In the Thai culture, as I said five weeks ago, I was stressing, because it was really important, the Buddhist history and the culture in relation to Thailand, People were ignoring the influences of their Thai culture on their facility in terms of inquiry learning. So I was saying, well, look, how about third criteria says, look, build that into your research report. What is it in your culture that is influencing? What is it in terms of your history that's influencing? The last criteria is known as authenticity. That I imagine that everybody in the room, including the minister, who was really, obviously, passionately committed to building your capacity to use the ICT, use the e-media. It's inevitable, he said, and it is. But the fourth criteria is one that no positive researcher needs to use, and it is to demonstrate your authenticity, that in your research report, to show that you truly believe in the values that you claim to hold. And he says you can only do that over time and interaction. So that's authenticity. So this is how you stop the criticisms that you're just being subjective and anecdotal. You build a validation group asking those very rigorous questions so you can demonstrate the comprehensibility. You've got sufficient evidence to justify any claim you make. You've taken account of your socio-historical and socio-cultural influences on you and that you're demonstrating you're authentic because you're showing over interaction and time you truly believe in the values you claim to hold. Now, I think that Mohammed and the group have managed to just bring the Action Research Net um, onto the, the screen. Um, and what I'd like to do is just, if I can, very quickly say, look, if you get into the actionresearch.net, which this comes up, okay, so it's, it's an archive. It's not supposed to be web designed. It's not um, following the, the principles of good web design. It's my archive. It's a personal archive I have created to make available freely to other people. And just a couple of things I want to point to before I stop. Here, uh, you've got all of the doctorates that have literally been sent to me from around the world. Um, and these doctorates um, are all living theory doctorates. That, that is, the people have studied themselves this one was only sent to me, the first one here. I don't know if you can see. I'll just wonder if I can... I'm not sure about the... Um, if the... Let me just see. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to... Uh, I want to just put the size of it up so you can actually read it. So I, I'll just have to tell you that um, I, I put my own doctor up here. You'll see, again, how do I improve my practice. Um, you'll see here, these are... That's from Ireland. 
the other one, this top one on the left is from South Africa, Durban University of Technology, that's correct, thank you. Um, this one here from Ireland, how am I bringing an educationally entrepreneurial spirit into higher education? And that is one of the most exciting recent ones because it uses multimedia. It's from the Center for E-Learning, Pedagogy and Workplace Learning, the Yvonne Grottis. Uh, there's my own doctoral thesis, how do I improve my practice? All I want to do is to show you how the eye, Phil Tattersall from Tasmania, this was on environmental activism. He's had 40 years as an environmental activist, he became excited by living theory, and he produced his whole uh, doctoral thesis with this question, how am I generating a living theory of environmental activism with inclusionality? Um, I won't go through too many of these, because this one here, how do I evolve living educational theory? How can I reconceptualize? But you get the idea that for the very first time, doctoral theses have actually got the eye within the inquiry title. And you've got, I can see over 35 of them there, I think there are almost 40 now from different parts of the world. Um, this, in terms of the master's units, which I think many of you might just enjoy having a look at, but the master educators programs, this is where I think each one of you can make this contribution, because you've all got a lot of embodied knowledge as educators. Traditional courses don't bring that embodied knowledge into the universities for accreditation. This process does. Now, I just want to point just to one that I would just advise you to access. And this is all from master educators. And I just want to point to this one in the educational inquiry accounts. Um, because it follows that task wheel, this one. Uh, Marie Huxtable's educational inquiry, how can I improve my practice through walking the talk? Now, you'll all recognize that, that people seem to talk a lot about something, but don't do it in practice. Marie was an educational psychologist, so she was studying herself to make sure that she was literally walking her talk. She was doing in practice what she claimed to be doing. But this metaphor here about doorsteps, dealing with doorsteps, she met boundary barriers, she met constraints, she had to face those and inquire into their nature. So you, I do hope that you will access this because it's one of the best illustrations of how um, a master's unit can be produced, which follows the actual reflection cycle explicitly. And this is one of the first ones to do it, that you'll actually see how possible it is for a, an individual to follow that cycle. Now, I will stop now because I've shown you uh, uh, what I wanted to just point to in terms of the actionresearch.net with all its resources. And on the right hand side, if you want to do this, it's what's new uh, in the academic year. Uh, you'll get the, uh, the, the top there is what I did five weeks ago in Thailand. Uh, you get uh, as a visiting professor at Edge Hill University, I've just given a lecture there. San Francisco, you'll see all of these down here in terms of multimedia accounts that were given um, in San Francisco. This is a, a month in April, the end of April. One at the inaugural conference of the Action Research Network of the Americas. Again, that's a lovely workshop with resources I think you'll enjoy. And the last thing I just want to point to that if you want to uh, join these, there are, there's a, what is called um, a practitioner researcher group that is in contact with each other and it's here. So you can join or leave the practitioner researcher e-seminar uh, by clicking on that and just filling your name and your address in and it comes to me and then I add you to it. Um, you've got, there is an archive with all the back issues uh, that you can actually access and it's been going about eight years this. But you can just see those are the, you can get into any of these, but it goes back to 2004, uh, it's nearly nine years. You get into the June 2003, you've got all of the correspondence that are going on, including some of the Thai researchers. And from Mauritius, you can actually join into that inquiry. People will respond to you, and you'll find a very supportive community around the world. And the last thing is uh, something, again, which is an international uh, group of people that on the right-hand side, if this doesn't reload, um, it just gets you back into an international, here it is, continuing professional development group here. So just underneath where you join or leave the practitioner group, if you get into this space, 
you'll see that it's um, offered as a learning resource, another learning resource, which you can join and put up your own material um, in relation to your own inquiry. So if you wanted to enhance the use of ICT immersion schools using action research, you could actually put up your draft accounts and you'll get responses from people to help you strengthen it in relation to this living values improving practice cooperatively. That's the right hand side of the What's New section. Are we okay, Mohammed, now in terms of timing? Sure. Yes. Yes? Good, good. Yes. Okay, well, many thanks indeed for allowing me to come and just talk with you. And I just hope that you'll find this resource uh, a useful one in terms of your own work, especially as the Minister says that the um, e learning and the hardware and the tablets are coming into the Mauritian schools. And actually, many of you will be, if you like, responsible for improving the learning with your students. And it may be that this action research process is one you find supportive. Okay, but many thanks indeed for having me with you. Thank you.